Okay, yeah. Um, um, thank you so much. Let's get started. Um, uh, again, I'm Chris. I'm a full stack engineer and uh, systems architect at Airy. And uh, as Karen pointed out, Airy is um, is building conversational infrastructure in an open source manner, so um, that you can uh, pretty much build any messaging use case that you can imagine in a privacy compliant and, and standardized way. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. But now I want to talk to you about how you can build uh, feedback loops between your chatbot engine on the one hand and your human customer support agents on the other hand. And if you if you recall the keynote speech by Alan, you're going to find that this is actually pretty much what he was talking about in terms of conversational development and making the next step for uh, for building um, for building uh, chatbot models in an agile manner. Um, okay. But let's start out with the with the use case with the with the, with a very typical problem, right? So um, this is something that we see a lot. Um, when you're in customer support, it's very common to get these kind of messages, and they're called multi-intent messages, right? Because um, customers are very likely, when they have an issue, to basically drop an entire book chapter into your chat uh, just to recount the story of how they got there and what their problem is now, right? Now the problem is that this pretty much stops most bots dead in their tracks, right? Like there's there are some frameworks around handling multi-intents, but um, the problem is even if your bot understands the intents that are contained in this message, it's not immediately obvious what you should reply here to. You know, should the bot reply to the password issue? Should it reply to, to the actual issue mentioned at the end? It's just fairly complex for a bot to handle. So uh, a standard solution for dealing with this is handing over the conversation to a human. This is something that lots of companies do and which has been talked about today too. Uh, and it works like this, right? So a user sends one of these messages. Um, the chatbot engine has to be uh, explicitly trained to handle such a message and to understand that it cannot handle such a message. And what it does then is uh, it pings customer support in your help desk software, and they take over the chat. And um, while well, the chatbot engine, of course, turns off, right, so that it doesn't interrupt the conversation. And this works really well because, um, first of all, uh, it means that every user request always gets answered in some way, um, so there are no dead ends. Um, but in another sense, it also brings a lot of problems, right? So first up, you need customer support agents, and, um, and training them and having them answer all those questions is kind of expensive and time-consuming, right? Especially if you need to go into a chat and you need to catch up with the conversation and you do to do, you know, basically chatting, right, which, which uh, you know, we... Uh, can take quite some time. Um, and also the, the experience that those agents deliver may not always be homogenous, uh, can be a huge variability. Uh, and we at Aerie have found that there's also another thing which is missing here, right? So you have at the one hand, you have, you have the bot, which uh, has, a, has a very rich um, domain knowledge about what kind of responses you have, uh, you can have, you know, what kind of questions can be asked. And on the other hand, you have the human agent, which is basically, um, in a sense, not the perfect, but a very good, um, uh, at, at responding to those messages and understanding context, right? So um, today I'd like to present you with an interaction model which um, basically leverages the synergy of both parties, right? And that is the conversational flywheel. And how it works is um, first a user writes a multi-intent message. Uh, again, the chatbot engine understands I cannot handle this. But instead of simply calling the agent and uh, you know calling it a day, um, the chatbot engine will suggest replies to customer support, right? So it's going to say, okay, um, I don't know which intent is the correct one, but I'm simply going to suggest the responses that I would have sent if I had picked any of those intents and suggest them as resp replies to customer support. And then support can very simply select a response, uh, send it to the user, conversation continues. And now you have a really nice thing. Uh, you have labeled data essentially, and uh, you can retrain your chatbot engine on this labeled data. And if you look at this, of course, um, there's a reason for the geometry because this is a positive feedback loop, right? So in a sense, the, the holy grail of organizational process development, um, a virtuous cycle right at the point where it matters most, you know, where you interact with your customers and, uh, and also where it makes your employees happy. Okay, um, so this is obviously sounds like a no-brainer, but it's pretty abstract. So, so what do I mean? Um, I want to now show you a use case that we've built with Airy open source software, and uh, which is also open source. I'm going to link the GitHub repository at the end of the talk uh, to, to give you a little bit of a feel for what this means in praxis, right? Uh, so let's start out with this um, user journey, which is, this is the Airy uh, chat plugin. So uh, it's a website plugin that you can add to your website as a JavaScript snippet, 
and it allows your customers to, to contact your page, right? So this is basically the user perspective in this case. And then next, you have um, the area inbox. So uh, the area inbox is basically uh, a customer um, uh, support interface where you can uh, write with your users, you can, you can send and receive messages, uh, and um, you can connect all your channels. There are also workflow features that allow you to you know, triage who needs to answer what request. And um, say a message like this comes in, uh, the bot would reply usually. Um, and, uh, and now, let's just wait a second. Yeah, now the user sends this rather you know, long and complicated message the bot doesn't understand. And um, you, may see, you may have seen a UI like this uh, in LinkedIn messages, in Gmail. Um, it's a very, very nice interface for chatting messages. And the agent simply, you know, selects the right reply and uh, and responds, you know, and uh, and that's that on the agent side, uh, which is a really really nice and quick experience. Um, yeah, and then if you go back to the user side, uh, this is super seamless, right? Because usually um, when you hand over to human agents, uh, it's common that the agent then writes something like, "Hi, I'm blah blah from customer support. How can I help you?" And there's an interruption. Uh, whereas in this case, to the user, it just kind of looks like your bot is working perfectly. You know, they they never have an interruption, and the flow is never interrupt. It's, it's, it's just you know, um, very smooth. Um, unless of course you need to interrupt the conversation and write text messages. It's still an option, uh, but most of the time you won't have to. Uh, yeah, and then last but not least, so now we've talked about the user side, um, and let's let's close the loop uh, and retrain our model. And this is a UI that um, Alan also demoed at the beginning of the, of the conference. Uh, this is Raza X, where you can um, where you can connect your Raza chatbot engine, uh, and uh, you can train on conversations in real time, right? And in this particular use case, uh, we can pretend as if as though the reply that we selected was sent by a bot, and then we can incorporate this into our user story and uh, simply retrain the model, push it online, um, and and you're done. Uh, and yeah, that that would be the entire loop uh, built in a completely open source um, manner. Okay, so um, now that we're here, let's briefly summarize the benefits that you get from this, right? So first up, of course, as I mentioned, it takes quite a lot of time to catch up with chats and uh, typing out all those very long messages. And um, simply selecting replies is just so much faster and easier for your agents. So, um, and you should keep their, their well-being at work in mind too, of course. Um, next up, um, you now have a completely new training data set that you didn't have before. Think about it. If your agents simply always, you know, type out messages, uh, it's very complicated to extract um, actionable responses or stories from your bot this way. Uh, but now, in a sense, your agents are speaking the language of your bot, right? So um, that makes the, that makes the conversation developer experience that much easier. Uh, and last but not least, the user side. Um, well, now that your model is trained on this response, the next time a user writes something like this, it's going to know just how to respond. So with every iteration, your bot is going to be faster and your user experience is going to be better. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned at the beginning, let's, let's connect this back to, um, to this entire conference and especially to what Alan said at the beginning, right? Because Raza has this really nice way of thinking about the levels in terms of two dimension, the user experience and the developer experience. From a user perspective, obviously this is really nice because all their, all their questions always get, an, get answered in some way, if there's an agent available, of course. Um, and from a developer experience, you now have this, as I mentioned, holy grail of process development, right? So you go, you move away from a process where you do top-down modeling of your chatbot engine, your dialogues and, and ha what have you not. And instead you, to borrow an analogy from software development, you have a more agile, um, more input driven, more, um, more feedback loop driven way of moving into the right direction with your bot. Um, yeah, so, um, so now I showed you uh, kind of the theory of all of this. Um, what's the practice? What should you do if you want to have this sort of flywheel in your organization? Well, let me offer you a blueprint. Um, first up, you of course need human agents. Next up, you should um, start with a very simple model, which um, which is just basically what I what I just said, that um, you don't want to do lots of top-down planning because you're likely to get parts of that wrong anyway, and instead you want to um, you want to make it so that um, the bot is a little bit liberal about handing those requests over to agent, right? So it's going to send in the beginning, it's going to send more of those requests to the agent and just check back, okay, is this the right reply? And then you iterate on that, right? So that way it's basically, um, you're starting from a point, uh, you're not so opinionated about that point with your chatbot, and then you iterate into the right direction. 
Um, yeah, so that's how that's how we, for instance, do it. Um, okay, let's um, also go into um, the, how do you build this technically? You know, um, uh, well, I'm going to tell you how we built it, and uh, the way is fairly straightforward. So, first up, when a user sends a multi-intent like that, it first up hits our conversational platform. Aha, uh, we're new. We're going to talk about that at some point. Um, and um, what that means is basically uh, this is a place where all your messages live. It also gives you this inbox UI that you showed you for customer support. Um, and most importantly, it's capable of streaming that data anywhere. One of those places you might want to stream it is yours truly, uh, the Raza open source core. Uh, and then again, the engine is going to decide, I can you know, reply to this. Um, let me suggest some replies. Um, and this one is a little bit interesting for all you uh, people familiar with the Raza API, because right now we're kind of in a catch-22 situation, right? Because the engine uh, has already decided, oh, I need to suggest replies. So how can you trick it into um, giving you the next best re responses? And what we do is here, as I mentioned, is like we apply a little trick. And uh, we basically pretend as if it's the, the last user message was that intent which we want to suggest. And then we simply ask the model, hey, can you predict for me what kind of action would you take in this case? And then we collect those actions. We do some filtering. We do some scoring. And now comes the magic for which you really need a UI that can handle this. Um, you need, we need to forward these two back to the conversational platform, right? And um, Aerie in particular has this capability that it can render the suggestions the way I showed you, and it has an open API endpoint where you can just send anything and, and suggest it in the inbox. Um, yeah, and last but not least, as, uh, as I already showed you, and now the agent selects a response, conversation continues, and uh, all this data gets streamed back to Raza, and, and then you can use Raza X um, uh, to do um, nearly online training, basically. Yeah, um, okay, so... Um, it's important to mention here that, of course, for this conversational flywheel, the parts that I'm showing you here are interchangeable. All you really need is a chatbot engine that can that can offer you these replies, and you need an inbox that can render suggested replies, right? Um, and now I briefly want to talk about what's so good about a conversational platform, right? Like, why should I even bother? Why can I not simply use um, uh, the chatbot engine directly? And for trivial use cases, I perhaps agree. But um, for non-trivial use cases, which uh, is like basically almost all ch uh, chatbot deployments nowadays, um, you would want this for the following reason. And that is that um, a conversational platform gives you, in a sense, a separation of concerns. So you have one place where you connect all your message channels in a scalable way. You have Google business mess messages, Facebook, WhatsApp, custom sources, chat plugins, whatever, as many Facebook pages as you want also. Um, and you have a, we have a very scalable ingestion platform that can store all your messages in an industry standard and privacy compliant way. And then on the right hand side, you uh, connect this platform to uh, a bunch of third party apps. It could be data stores, could be your chatbot engines, your CRM like Salesforce, um, you name it. And in the case of Aerie, you also get lots of batteries included, for instance, like you get this inbox UI that I showed you. Um, the entire thing, by the way, is open source, as I think I mentioned a couple of times, which means you can run this on any infrastructure, basically, um, and it's pretty easy to set up. And um, uh, maybe you can have a look at that later if, if you're interested. Uh, and yeah, but um, to come back now to what we learned today, I'd like to um, do a brief recap, um, yeah, things you should take away. Um, well, first of all, um, to get to level three, um, it's really useful to use human agents, of course, right? Because they can, in a sense, fill the gaps for you and, uh, and make it possible to deliver a great user experience under all circumstances. Uh, next up, you may want to make those agents' lives much, much easier by leveraging the domain knowledge of your bot and suggesting some common replies to them uh, when, they're, uh, when they're replying to customers. And last but not least, you close the loop by also feeding those response selections back to your bots, making them smarter in a, in a, in a feedback loop. Um, and, and that way, your customer, your agents, all stakeholders essentially um, uh, get a much um, faster, more pleasant experience out of, uh, out of the loop, right? Yeah. So yeah, hashtag conversation development in a sense, and um, do consider uh, using a conversational platform for that. Um, that's it uh, from me. Uh, I'd like to remind you that everything I showed you today is open source. So um, both the suggest reply demo uh, and the conversational platform. Um, so uh, do check that out if you're uh, curious.